sometimes the weather does not cooperate. But still, that will not deter us from having a great time in Seward, Alaska. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. Yep, it is flooded. Well, what can I say? Really not a fan of, uh, you know, breaking camp uh, in conditions like this, you know, rainy, wet, soupy, it's like miserable. Everything is wet, everything is dirty. But sometimes you gotta do it. Hopefully the weather down in Seward will be a little better, but doesn't look promising. <laughs> What a difference day makes, huh? We should be seeing gorgeous mountains across Turnagain Arm. And there goes the Chugash Express. Anyway, we've been in Alaska now for almost a month, so I'm going to kind of categorize what we've seen so far. There's the wild north, cold and frosty in winter, not so great roads, and I'm even going to include Fairbanks there. You can see a moose or a bear almost anywhere and it's got a somewhat frontier feel to it. Especially the farther north you go. It is wild and beautiful. On the other side of the coin you have Anchorage. Let's call it, for lack of a better word, the civilized part of Alaska. Not to say that Fairbanks was uncivilized, but you know what I mean. And here I'm including some of the nearby towns like Palmer and Wasilla. It quote-unquote feels like the rest of the United States. All the national chain stores and restaurants and all the services and amenities of a big city. And there is still wild beauty surrounding you in every direction. Then we have the part we're about to enter, the Kenai Peninsula. This I'm going to call the touristy part of Alaska. This is where the cruise ships dock, where most of the tours depart from. And if the weather cooperates, I know we're going to see some marvelous things. And this is Seward, Alaska. Very busy town. We're staying at Seward Municipal Campgrounds. $55 for water and electric and nope, I could not get a waterfront site. It is fairly tight. We're going into town to grab a bite to eat. We're hungry. Did I mention it was a little tight? Even on this cloudy day, the views are fabulous. First, we're gonna get the lay of the land. Here on the right is the main area. The terminal where the Kenai Fjords cruise departs from, a couple of restaurants, some shops, but we're gonna turn around. Here's one of the many murals around town. We're going to go to the south side, but tomorrow we're definitely coming back here because tomorrow we're getting on a boat. Yes, this is the area. We're going to see a waterfall first, and then we'll come back. I see a brewery in our future. Oh, Miami driver. Here's the waterfall, and what a horrible road. Long Creek Waterfall. And this road Horrendous. There, that's our waterfall on the side of the road. 
and this is called Waterfall Beach, as the waterfall flows right into Resurrection Bay here. And here are our views of Resurrection Bay on this very cloudy day. One can only hope that it clears up a little for our Kenai Fjords cruise tomorrow, but the weather forecast doesn't look very promising. There is Starship looking good under the rain. Oh yeah, this road is full of holes. We get to see a waterfall. Here's the Sea Life Center, more murals. Let's try and find parking here. Oh, like a glove. Well, the weather is not cooperating, but as you know by now, you know how we do it, right? And uh, this is a very walkable town here. But uh, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to a brewery. And here we have a Seward Brewing Company, I believe it is called. We're on the second floor, and here they have a stage, so maybe there's live music sometimes. Well, cheers. And our food has arrived. Mushroom soup. I got the hot chicken, and Eli got the tacos. And we kind of, sort of, have a view. Can you imagine this place with good weather? Pretty cool place. And here they have some pinball machines and vintage video games. Mmm, that's where the magic happens. Well, that was a pretty decent hot chicken sandwich. Let's check out the Yukon bar, it's supposed to be famous. Well, this is really cool. It reminds me of a bar in Key West, with all these bills stapled to the ceiling and other surfaces. Bartender reminds me of Guilfoyle from Silicon Valley. And uh, I think this is going to be a good way to end our first day here in Seward. The weather certainly doesn't call for any outdoor activities. It does not stop raining. Uh, hopefully tomorrow it'll improve. This video is sponsored by RVMattress.com by Brooklyn Bedding. Like most people, sleep is really important to us. So I was super excited to partner with them a few months ago because RVMattress.com is a Brooklyn bedding brand known for top-of-the-line comfort and quality. And let me tell you, the difference is very noticeable. Plus, their mattresses are made right here in the USA and shipped conveniently to you for free. They offer different firmness options, heights, dimensions, even RV-specific and non-traditional sizes to fit right into your lifestyle. Here we have a short queen, 60 by 74, here in Mini Tiri, which happens to be one of those non-standard sizes. So if you watch my first Alaska video, you may have noticed we had an Aurora Lux, which was great, day and night compared to the stock mattress, but it was a little softer than we're accustomed to. So we took advantage of the 120 night sleep trial, and now we have a signature hybrid, firm, with a cooling pillow top, I think this is a much better match for us. As I mentioned, it is very easy to buy online. Free shipping comes right to your doorstep, vacuum sealed, rolled up inside a box. And even though our trailer is tiny, it was still super easy to get it on the bed and unroll it. And it is incredible. Once you break the vacuum, it just inflates in a matter of seconds. The best part about all this is that Brooklyn Bedding manufactures all their RV mattresses in their own factory in Arizona. This means they're able to use premium materials at a reasonable price, no middleman bringing up the cost. Plus, they are fiberglass free, which is very important. They offer, as I mentioned, a 120 night sleep trial and a 10 year warranty. And let me tell you, sleeping in Alaska in the summer could have been a challenge because it never gets dark. It really messes up with your internal clock. So blackout shades and having a comfortable mattress is the perfect combination for a good night's sleep. Not only in Alaska. 
Thank you RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding for sponsoring. Visit rvmattress.com slash travelingrobert to get 25% off your mattress with code travelingrobert. But wait, there's more. Make sure you check out their Black Friday sale at the end of this month. It'll be their biggest deal of the year. Don't miss out on the best sleep of your life. Visit rvmattress.com and hurry, because once November is over, so are these incredible deals. Good morning. Perhaps, oh, there's a cruise ship in town. Perhaps not the best weather to get on a boat today, but, um, you know, the weather is the one thing you can't control, right? And we booked uh, this uh, trip on the Kenai Fjords a couple of weeks ago, you know, I, I was afraid that, you know, it might fill up or, or whatnot. But actually, the, the clouds and the fog give the mountains uh, unique look so this may not be a, to a totally negative thing you know we might get a, a unique experience here uh, the boat departs in about uh, two hours so I'm gonna start uh, getting ready but first let me let me show you a view of this um, resurrection bay here if it wasn't for the lifeboats and some colors on the boat you would think this is a black and white film at least, we can see more mountains than yesterday. In this case, that fog, that mist, actually enhances the experience. At least it is a different experience, <laughs> if you will. Maybe we'll be back in a couple of days and there will be perfect weather, but today it's, I mean, it certainly looks unique here. Yeah, I should have tried and get one of these uh, waterfront sites most of these are, are dry camping though all right let's get ready for our cruise oh it's a yoga Anyway, we have to make sure we have everything we need because we're going to be on the boat for at least six hours. Well, it is a little later now. Now we're going to go get our, our shuttle that's going to take us to the port. It's going to take us to our boat. But the fog is a lot denser now, so I don't know. I'm not feeling as optimistic as I was this morning. Getting worse by the minute. Oh boy. Here we are, waiting for the shuttle. And it is getting better again. This Alaska weather is way too unpredictable. Can I feel Yep, our shuttle is here. Wave goodbye to Mini Tini 4. We checked in and now we have some time, so we're going to walk around a little bit. I suppose many people go on fishing tours and hang their trophies here. It is a huge marina. We are going to get on one of those, one of the catamarans.
here's another one of those murals of what we're about to see, or supposed to see on a clear day. We're just about ready to board. That's our boat, the Ayalek Voyager. I think we're gonna go outside, although it might be a good idea to take an indoor seat, just in case it rains later. Out here it's going to be perfect, as long as the weather holds up. We're moving! Check it out, a bald eagle, what a majestic bird. Here we have another wildlife sighting, a floating sea otter. That is very cool to see, very cool animals. Looking back, we can barely see Seward anymore. We begin picking up speed, going south on Resurrection Bay towards the Pacific Ocean. I believe this is Thumb Cove here, barely visible. It's raining pretty hard.
here we have another bald eagle just looking at us like what are we doing here getting soaked under the pouring rain we continue Amazing, all these cliffs and that waterfall. That's what I call dedication and love of the outdoors. Perhaps next time we should do it in a small boat like that one. Get a more intimate tour. But this first time, I think it was a good idea to get the six-hour cruise. Oh, check it out! The Natural Bridge! And there's an eagle's nest. Poor birds getting soaked. We are now on the open ocean, going towards Ialic Bay. Here's another arch, or is it a natural bridge? Here we got some jellyfish and another bald eagle. Wait for it, it is perched on the top of the tree. Everywhere you look, even under these bleak weather conditions, it is just beautiful. We came indoors for a little bit because we were getting soaked. Now there's a lot of ice on the water. We must be getting close to a glacier. There it is. These are our first views of Ialic Glacier.
we're gonna get a little closer. Maybe we'll get lucky and we'll get to see some glacier cabin. Although, it is super difficult to catch on camera, just because it is so unpredictable. And by the time you hear the noise, it already happened. I am hopeful though. of admission here, right? <laughs> That's a glacier right there. Oh my gosh. It's a big lock of ice across the glacier right there. Yes, they are fishing some glacial ice out of the water. And what have we got here? Wildlife! peeled, we may experience some cabin at any moment. Ooh, I almost got that one. There's another one. Well, hello, friend. Hello, friend. Imagine if that one huge piece would fall off right now. That would be epic. That's our sister ship. It is a little smaller. And this is an amazing glacier. I was so mesmerized by the glacier. I didn't even notice these waterfalls. I think we're about to continue. It keeps on Kevin, but it is time to go. Well, this was great. So far, this has been the highlight of our entire Kenai Fjords cruise. Oh, check that out. Apparently, it was a rough landing, which happened this past June 26. According to what I read, thankfully, there were no injuries. It must have been scary, but it could have been a lot worse. A 
off we go, speeding away. Taking a break indoors from the cold and the rain. Besides, we're encountering pretty rough seas out here on the open Pacific. We are now approaching the Chiswell Islands, an important bird sanctuary. We should be able to see all kinds of wildlife here. I believe there's a puffin on the water. Yep, there it is! We've got some sea lions. The fog and the rain, they kind of give everything this mysterious Jurassic Park-esque feel to everything, enhancing the already striking landscape. And there is wildlife everywhere. Here we have some more birds. We continue speeding away towards another area. I believe we've got whales! Oh my gosh, look at that! Humpback whales! amazing spectacle. 
I think by now it is safe to say our six hour Kenai Fjords cruise was a success. Even if Mother Nature did not cooperate all that much in the weather department. Oh wait, there's more! That's it for the humpbacks. Now all we can do is reflect on the marvelous experience as we speed back to Seward. We're back, arriving in Seward, the bald eagle still there, welcoming us back like a faithful sentinel. And it is still raining. We're back on mainland. The plan right now is to get back to the RV and then find something to eat. It feels good to be back in our tiny home on wheels. Race is our first choice, but it has a very long waiting time. Alaska Seafood Grill seems nice, but a little more casual than we're looking for. Well, we ended up at this place called the Chinooks. Chinooks, get a view. Table with a view. We even have some wildlife. Yeah. Clam chowder. The halibut with crab. And the basil halibut. Not the best food or service we've had in Alaska, but the view makes up for it. <sighs> it's been a long day. I'll get back to you tomorrow. Well, I had this whole grand plan to hike all the way to the top of Marathon Mountain. Oh, Someone is making noise. Okay, this is much better. Take two. <laughs> so I had this whole grand plan to hike all the way to the top of Marathon Mountain back there. I mean, you're supposed to get like this great views of the whole, you know, Resurrection Bay. And now it turns out that uh, in 30 minutes it's gonna start raining. I don't know, it doesn't really look like it, but... I mean, it can't possibly be any worse than yesterday, right? But I don't know if I wanna... If I wanna make that hike in the rain. We'll see, we'll see how bad it is. <laughs> and uh, we may or may not do that. Otherwise, if not, we'll make it a work day, which God, God knows there's a lot of video that still needs to be edited. So, for now, you know, let's just enjoy this. I mean, this is 
marvelous place. We're finally able to see Resurrection Bay, you know, it's been foggy all these days. I don't know if you can tell, but all the starlings in this campground are like heavily tilted to the south, which is different. Starling, Starling usually likes to, to tilt to the north. And uh, what's to the south of our, you know, permanently installed Starlink there on the roof? Our air conditioner. Our air conditioner is, uh, is obstructing Starlink, so it's virtually unusable. But then again, we got pretty decent Verizon and AT&T here. Let's go for a drive around Resurrection Bay. Oh, what is that blue thing up there? And those mountains? Those weren't there before. Let's take advantage of this good weather because I'm pretty sure it will be short-lived. It wouldn't be Alaska if we didn't have some construction. But while we're stopped, take a look at those mountains. It wouldn't be Alaska if we didn't have beautiful mountains all around us. The only bad thing is that you don't always get to see them. But if you stay someplace long enough, almost guaranteed the weather will change. This pullout is called Seward Lookout, and we're going to be able to see the town from across the bay. Let's go to this other viewpoint called 4th of July Beach. And I believe this is the Seward Shipyard. Lots of boats here in storage. Here we are. I'm not sure I can drive down there, so we're going to explore on foot. Well, this is 4th of July Beach. Today we get magnificent views of Resurrection Bay here. The Pacific Ocean somewhere out there. We've got such great visibility today. What a difference compared to the weather we experienced yesterday. If there is something we've learned is that perhaps we shouldn't make reservations that far in advance. Not that yesterday was a bad experience, but it was certainly a wet one. Preheating the convection oven here and this is gonna be like brunch today and check it out a Cuban inspired ham and cheese uh, uh, pizza product of Germany we picked this up at, uh, at Fred Meyer uh, in, in Anchorage but hmm interesting yep I'm getting Cuban sandwich vibes here hmm it's actually pretty good. It is getting cloudy again.
lots of starlings here in Alaska. And it's raining again. Well, lo and behold, it stopped raining and it's supposed to remain this way for, for at least two hours. So let's go on that little hike. Maybe we'll, we won't do the, like the whole trail, but an hour up, an hour down, should work. Uh, even the sun wants to come out. And let me tell you, sometimes I forget that we're actually in Alaska. There you go, Mount Marathon race. Yeah, people actually race up this mountain. It is always a good idea to look back from time to time. Well, here we go, this seems to be a trailhead. There are actually several trails that bifurcate here, but we're taking the, the quickest possible route to the top. Hmm, this looks like it might be a little more technical than I'm prepared for. So... Okay, this might be a little steeper than I was expecting. But we'll do as much as possible. <laughs> I took off my jacket. It's starting to get hot, but... I mean, this is pretty steep, so we'll see. We'll see how far we can make it. Tell you what, I am not comfortable with this uh, level of steepness. I mean, look at that. And uh, it's a little muddy. I haven't really done anything like this in a while, so I want to see if I can find a less challenging route. In this case, I think it was wise to know when to quit, and at least we get to see the glacier. Yeah, I found the other trail on all trails here and uh, it is the, it's called the Skyline Trail and it's a lot less challenging, at least on the way up. And uh, that's the one I'm going to do. But the trailhead is not here. The trailhead is actually a couple of blocks uh, north of here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I didn't really use this. Public use of this non-designated trail is not recommended. We're going to do this one here. <laughs> This is it, I think we are at the correct trailhead now. Okay, so the Jeep trail. I'm gonna try to get all, uh, at least up to here. And, uh, well, let's see. Uh, let's see how this goes. If it, if it appears to be too strenuous, too slippery, too steep, we'll, we'll call it quits. It's gonna rain in an hour anyway. Well, this is definitely the most strenuous hike I've done, at least since my injury back in January. And I'm definitely a little out of shape, I gotta admit that. But if I don't do stuff like this, I'm gonna remain out of shape. We can't let that happen, right? Oh man, it feels like 45 degrees up relentlessly. We must be getting close to the waterfall. Here we are at the waterfall.
Oh, that was nice. Let's keep going a little bit, see if we can make it at least to the, to the end of the tree line. Well, I've been walking for an hour and 45 minutes, but we just got to this trail, so we have to do a little bit more, right? And this is supposed to be a Jeep trail, so I guess if you have a, an appropriate vehicle, like a Jeep, you could do this with a Jeep. But I don't know. I think we're almost, almost to the tree line. Look up. Yeah, baby. Almost there. Oh. I'm not gonna lie. It's been a challenging hike so far. Let's hope the view up there is worth it. And the sun just came out, and I hear water. Let's see what we have here. It's a waterfall back there. Can't really see it, but we can certainly hear it. And starting to get some views here. I'm gonna give it another five minutes. If I don't see a view, we're heading back down. Very muddy and very narrow. Here we go. Here we have a dam. Is it this way? I don't know which way the trail goes. Am I supposed to ford this river here? I'll tell you what. I think this is as far as I'm gonna go. Let's get back down. I see some menacing clouds coming from the east, so um, yeah. This is the end of our Mount Marathon, Marathon adventure for today. I mean, if I keep doing this at least once a week, I'll be in shape in a couple of months, right? Maybe we can do some winter hikes out west next year. I wish I could have kept going because the views were going to be great, but I'm not quite up to the task yet. Besides, I wouldn't want to get caught in the middle of a rainstorm at the top of the mountain. Oh man, that's steep. <laughs> and as hard as it is on the way up for your muscles, on the way down, it is your knees that feel it, especially these 52 year old knees. My ankle, by the way, hasn't bothered me. I mean, I'm probably gonna feel some pain tomorrow, but so far, so good. Whoa. Hello. Hey. Such a lush vegetation here, this time of the year. Keep going. Oh, I did 10,000 steps already. Now comes the, the real, real steep part of the trail. Come on this side better. I think this might be better. I see the gate down there. This is the final stretch. The end of the trail. Let's see how we did. Let's see how we did. Uh, on the trail itself, I did uh, 1.69 miles, a little less than an hour. Yeah, we did it like a third of the whole thing, right? That's not so bad. 
Now in total, since I left the RV, I've done 3.13 miles, an hour and 20 minutes. And right now I think it's like, I don't know, a little over a quarter mile to the RV park. We should be there before, the, before it starts raining. Now it says here, my radar, light raining, 13 minutes. I think we're gonna be able to beat it. We were so close, right at the tree line up there. Let's go see Exit Glacier. Exit Glacier. There's a hiking trail that goes all the way to the glacier, but I think this view is good enough for today. So we finally made it to Ray's Waterfront. And we're almost waterfront. Oh, we are waterfront, almost window. Bread, olive oil and vinegar, clam chowder, and uh, some bubbly, because why not? Seafood pasta. Mm. Oh, it's raining a lot. What, what can I say? Race lives up to the hype. Oh, good morning. Let me tell you something. The weather hasn't really been on our side as of late. And... Um, well, we're, we're, we're moving along, we're going towards uh, Soldatna today, but I just wanted to show you. Remember all those pretty mountains? Not today. We've got zero visibility to our 360 degrees here. Had we arrived today, <laughs> I would have been very disappointed. <laughs> But at least we got to see something, we got to do something and, you know, maybe that's the way Alaska weather is, you know. <laughs> this is, this is for real, for real Alaska. I'm gonna hitch up, unplug the power, dump our tanks and continue. On the next one, we continue on our journey on the Kenai Peninsula, towards the towns of Soldotna and Kenai. It will be another unique Alaska experience, as our visit coincides with the Salmon Run. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and see you on the road. Riding in my